So the molecule or system in which we generate a population inversion is known as the lasing medium. Um, and you can have uh, liquid-based lasing media, you can have solids, you can have gases, you know, all these are, are possible different lasing media. I will consider a case where we have, say, a solid, or this could be a gas. And this, act, this lasing medium acts as an amplifier. Once we can set up this population inversion, right, and so we have a particular um, molecule or atom inside of our lasing medium that has this energy level structure, has these four different levels that we can, we can use to generate the, the population inversion. Uh, so that acts as our amplifier. So we send in our pump, whether that's light or electricity or whatever. And the way we achieve an actual laser is we need a couple of mirrors as well. So usually we have something that's very highly reflective. There are other ways of doing this, but this is say 99% plus uh, reflective on this side. And so light that gets generated by the amplifier, by our lasing medium, bounces off this mirror and then goes back through our, our lasing medium. And so as it passes through the medium again, it creates more photons. Uh, and then we have another mirror on this side, which we call the output coupler, which is a little bit less reflective, maybe 98% you know, or less reflective. So most of that light will get set back through again. And as this light bounces back and forth through the amplifier, it gets brighter, right? We get more and more light. Uh, but the thing that makes laser so interesting is all this light is at a very specific frequency, right? It's at the specific frequency that matches the lasing transition. And so because this output coupler is a little bit less reflective, some of the light also comes out and this is our laser beam that we actually use for whatever we're trying to do. Now, this is a very simplified schematic. You know, how you actually build this thing matters a lot. Uh, and so, and it depends on the type of laser you're building, you know, whether it's a continuous laser or a pulsed laser, um, you know, what your gain medium looks like, your lasing medium, whether it's a liquid, solid, or gas affects, you know, how you actually put this together. Uh, but this is the basic idea of how we do this. And What's so useful about this is that we get some very distinct properties from lasers that you don't get with other light sources like a light bulb or something like that. So property number one, lasers are highly directional, meaning you know, it's, it's beams of light. And what that means is it's a lot easier to control. Right? You know exactly which direction the light is going and you can much more easily manipulate it. Whereas with say a light bulb, so you know a laser produces a beam, a light bulb produces light in every single direction. So if we want to harness all of that light, we have to somehow collect it all and then direct it. Often what we do is we just use part of the light from the light bulb. We don't necessarily use all the light. Okay, two, uh, laser light is monochromatic. meaning it's a very specific color of light. So lasers generate light that is uh, instead of like a light bulb where it's, you know, you get the entire spectrum, you know, the whole rainbow. If you have, you have a light bulb, you get only one specific color out of a laser. So you get red light or green light, and it's not even just red or green. It's a specific wavelength of light. Um, and so, you know, it has to match the energy gap that's in our, our you know, energy level system uh, and also um, has to be supported by the laser cavity, which we don't get, go into all that. But basically, your light only has one color. Uh, the third property is that it is very bright. And this is partially related to the uh, directionality of the laser. Um, so because of the amplification that you get inside of the laser cavity, laser cavity is that um, the whole setup with the lasing medium and the mirrors, um, you get amplification and very, very bright light sources. So you get lots of light all directed in a specific directions, in a specific direction. Um, so amplification and very bright light, um, essentially the light can be several times brighter than the sun 
um, in a very you know specific directed beam at a specific color, and that can be incredibly useful, right? If you you know say for laser eye surgery or something like that, you you have very bright light that you can control, it makes it really really useful. And the final property, uh, which we won't talk about too much, but is really important for some types of spectroscopy, is that laser light is coherent. Um, and this is a property of stimulated emission of radiation. So basically all of the waves line up. All the waves of electromagnetic radiation are in phase. And this is not true of you know, other types of light sources like, like light bulbs or the sun or, or you know, black body emission, things like that. Um, they don't generally generate coherent light. So the, you know, the, the phases of the electromagnetic radiation are all you know, randomly distributed. Whereas in a laser, they're all aligned together, uh, which is, a, which is an uh, important property of laser light.